Okay, here with uh, Jody Brown for uh, for Wings TV after our uh, defeat to uh, Dover Athletic today. Um, Jody, I, I obviously said this afternoon that you know you can always take um, stuff out of uh, out of defeat, and you learn more perhaps from from defeats. Um, is that the case this time around? You've you've uh, you've learned a lot from today's game. Yeah, of course. I'll, uh, I'm not sure you learn more from a defeat, but I was always going to learn a lot from my first game in charge. Uh, first time I've been in the dressing room with the boys, first time I've addressed them in terms of preparing for a game tactically and um, in, in terms of trying to motivate them and, and be ready for the opposition. Um, and, you know, I've experienced how they are when they come in at half-time and they're behind and I've experienced how they come in uh, at the end of the game. So, you know, I've learned plenty and I've learned a lot about individuals within the game. So, um, you know, trying to put a positive twist on a 4 0 Defeat isn't particularly easy, but on this occasion, uh, there's very little I could do really in terms of the selections. We, um, uh, you know, the squad is really, really at bare bones. Uh, two of the boys who had to start today, we had no choice but to start them, had, had like flu, flu-like symptoms, and we'll, you know, I could see that they were struggling throughout the game. But we have got no options, so. Um, it was what it was, and yeah, I learned plenty about each player. So tell us about the preparations then, because one thing I noticed today is that um, uh, the, the boys got a coach. Um, now, obviously, a bit more of a local game. That's not something that, you know, perhaps they would, they would have done as normal. Was that something just to sort of gel the group, um, would you say? Well, having, having not even had a training session, I, I felt it important to travel up together so that we had a chance to speak to individuals, um, had a quick meeting at the club before we left as well. Um, and I just felt that was important because, you know, it, this, is, it, this isn't an excuse. It just simply is what it is. And it's a very, very difficult time to come. The squad is at the bare bones. Unlike levels below, you know, the conference after one and premier, we could have brought players in. But here you can't bring players in it January the 1st. So we're stuck with really only 13 fit players um, and, and we don't know a great deal about each other, me about them and them about me so uh, it was important to travel together today yeah, um, and, and get the chance to talk to people, get to know people, get some ideas across and uh, just just professional preparation really. Now up until the first goal we started the game really well and obviously we had the chance with, with Malachi Hudson and obviously if that goes in it's, it's, it's a different game but looking back the first goal um, if you're being ultra critical, was we carved open too easy for your liking, Jody? I was really disappointed with the nature of all four goals. The first goal, um, you know, we were just caught very, very high and very, very square. It wasn't particularly like clever football. It was just they helped the ball back in behind us, and uh, he got in far too easy. I think like, I'll be interested to see a replay because I do think he was a couple of yards offside, but um, you know, it's still not an excuse for being caught. Second goal, um, did we stand off or do you just put it down to a really good strike? It's a good strike, but, you know, again, uh, whenever there's a goal scored, there's going to be an error somewhere, let's be honest. Um, it, it was a good strike, but we've cleared the ball well from the first delivery and we just haven't got out and got pressure on the ball. And we've showed a right footed player inside and he, and he stuck it in the top corner. So we were punished for it, but, you know, it's a hard score and you can't. You can't allow people that sort of time and space to 18, 20 yards out. Now, obviously, you go in at half-time 2-0. What, what, what did you say to the boys? What was the team talk? Uh, we were you know, we were disappointed. The boys were disappointed. They didn't feel that they had given a fair reflection of what they're capable of and, nor what they have been doing up till now this season. They felt as though they'd let, let us down to a degree and they were determined to go out and, uh, and make amends. Uh, so it came as a a sucker blow to give the ball away cheaply like we did and, and concede within a minute or two of the, the restart it gave us a real uphill task um, but I do feel that reaction that they kind of promised us came straight after that goal and I do think that like for probably 30 minutes we really asked questions and we had three or four good chances uh, I thought the introduction of Charlie Penny and Malik you know, was quite a positive one I, I thought that you know Charlie Charlie caused them a lot of problems and uh, was clearly dug back uh, by the last man. 
it went for a goal. You know, I asked the linesman at the time, and the linesman said, "Yeah, yeah, saw the tug. He's, he's, he's pulled him back." But we 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 decided to play the um, play the advantage. We thought he was in on goal, and I said, "Yeah, but he wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't in on goal, was he?" So you meant to call it back, and you know, it is what, again, it's got to just take it. I mean, there's nothing you can do. But at that point, maybe Charlie goes clean through. Scores, it's three one, and, and, and we get back in it. Or even the lad gets sent off, and you know uh, it, it could have been massively different. I, I do think there was a couple of questionable decisions. Certainly the first goal looked offside, and then that one where he he seen the tug. They, all the officials have said they seen the tug. Just felt that Charlie had shrugged it off and was going to go through. Um, I think I think at a higher level than ours, it gets called back straight away, and the, and the boy gets a red card. But not an excuse for the overall result it's just they are turning points and they are defining moments where the game might change yeah looking at it for positives as well the double substitution which is something we, you said in the interview last week that you're not scared to, to make decisions and take players off and in fairness to you Jody, you know it was a good double substitution because as, as you quite rightly say you know we, we looked a lot livelier, livelier for that that must also plan your mind for your starting 11 for uh, Sunday's game with Torquay yeah, like I say, I learned about all the individuals today, um, or all the boys that managed to get out there. And yeah, it will it will play a part in my in my thoughts for the weekend. But you know, I, I'll keep going back to it. These boys are being asked a hell of a lot. They played 120 minutes on Tuesday, two days of rest. One of them being Christmas Day, they have to come out and play 90 minutes again today. They're going to have to do it again Sunday. We've got, we've got 13 fit players. We've got 13 match fit players. Um, to play four games in sort of seven, eight days, uh, and some of these boys are teenagers. It's um, it's a lot to ask, but like I said to them, certainly by the end of it, I'm going to know a lot about them, and they're going to know a lot about me. But I'd be lying if I didn't say I can't wait to get on the training ground and start be able to get to know people and uh, and try and get some of my own methods across. And uh, the fourth goal, any complaints with the uh, with, with the penalty? Nah. To be fair to um, uh, Bouchel, he, he he did actually try and pull out of it, but he committed to it and like he's pulled his arms out of the way, but the boy went over his body. It's a penalty and it's a red card, unfortunately. Um, I'm more disappointed about how it came about, you know, the, the comedy of errors on the halfway line, which led to the boy being clean through 1v1 and, and making the scoreline look even more... Um, embarrassing but you know even more clinical than maybe it was so as you say um you know you look you, you've obviously got sort of a, a list as long as your arm in terms of players who, who who you want to bring in um do you know when a lot of the loans are up for current players that are with us and obviously whether or not they're going to look to be extended um or if you're looking to bring your own players in uh, well, i'm gonna have to bring some of my own players in you know there's no doubt about it I've, I'll be honest with you, and you know this isn't meant as a as a sort of a attack at the previous regime, but to be so low on numbers at, at this level, I I have to admit I am surprised. I am surprised at the conference premier that we're sitting with 13 fit players, and even if everyone was fit, I've probably only got 16, 17 players, um, which does you know when you bear in mind Torquay will probably travel with 20. Um, and, and today at Dover, they had six or seven boys in the treatment room doing this stretching and that that weren't even included in the game. So, you know, that's, that's clearly what you're up against in terms of squad sizes. But I intend on getting our squad up to that sort of size. Um, in terms of the lone players, um, SL is up on the 17th of Jan. I would definitely like to extend that. I've been an admirer of him for, for a while. I think he's got a lot of potential. I think if you get him the football in the right areas, he, he, he's got very, very good feet and he can cause problems. Um, the two keepers are both up on Jan the 1st, uh, which obviously brings brings about a problem. So hopefully we'll get at least one of them extended. Um that's it, uh, yeah, what I was going to ask is, when can we actually sign players from? Can we have them playing for the Dover game at home on the 1st? Or uh, is it going to be Forest Green away that we can see some new additions well, in the side? Well, at, at the moment, I'm unsure. I've had, you know, I, from the club, uh, they felt that it was, uh, we could sign them on the 1st and they'd be eligible for the 4th. But when I did the interview earlier for Kent Radio, 
the guy seemed pretty adamant that you could sign players on the uh, on the thirty first, and they'd be eligible for the first. That's uh, that's that, that's good to hear. Now, obviously, um, well, yeah. So I need I need to get it clarified. I think you know, guys at the club are looking yeah, for me. Of course, of course. Uh, I will do our best to try and strengthen if it is at all possible. Uh, we lost Tyro Marsh, uh, who went back on loan to Oxford yeah. and then straight out to um, Ebbsfleet. Um, obviously, Jamie knows these players pretty well, and you know he's going to be perhaps, for want of a better word, sniffing about. Um, is that a frustration for you at the moment? I mean, it's not frustrating because you kind of accept it um, as part and parcel of football. Uh, I would have liked to have at least had the chance to speak to Tyrone, um, but the deal was deal was done before before he left Welling. You know, I think it's clear as day that it was already it was already agreed and it was already happening. Um, I don't know Tyrone, so I don't want to question his personality, but I don't see it as a good move moving backwards, and I don't really buy into this what I keep hearing about one step back, two steps forward. It will be two steps forward when they actually get two steps forward. That's you know that's how I look at it. Yeah, they're a big club with lots of money, but um, it's two steps forward when they're in the football league, isn't it? It's not. It's not two steps forward at the moment. It's one step back. Clearly, for a player, for a manager, yet yeah, you go into a club with better resources and the long term might look very, very good. But for a player, quite clearly, dress it up however you want. It is one step backwards. And for Tyrone, he's gone from a league club to a Conference South club, so you know that's his choice. And I dare say he's got his own reasons for it. But, um, if I was a player scoring prolifically in the conference of late, I certainly wouldn't be dropping down to the conference south. You only have to look at people like um, Andre Gray at Luton last year, scored prolifically, and now he's playing in the championship. I certainly wouldn't look at uh, taking such a short side approach as going back at division. No, that might come back to haunt me, and we might play him next year in the conference, and uh, he might bag a brace or something and say, see, I told you so, but. It's not easy to get out of the division, and uh, he might have just signed up for eighteen months in the conference south. Um, looking at the uh, the training regime in terms of when you obviously do, as you say you look eager to get, to get the boys on the training pitch, um, are you going to keep the same training regime, um, which I think was a couple of mornings a, a week, or are you going to look to implement your own style? Uh, it will take a bit of time. It will take a bit of time. I'm going to. I don't want to disrupt things too much over this Christmas period. Um, because it is a very difficult time with lots of games, but over time I'll, I'll assess how things work, and no doubt I will want to change things. You know, I'm not a fan of, of Jamie, of Jamie Day as well as he done. I, I'm my own man, so I dare say there's no two men in football that think exactly the same way and do things exactly the same. So, you know, clearly he's done very, very well. Clearly the players have been doing well. Clearly the clubs made huge progress in the last few years, but obviously I will have my own ideas. Um, <clears throat> Sunday Torquay at home um, obviously you know so far so good in terms of our home form and just looking for that to continue yeah it's going to be difficult though you know I can't I can't dress it up it's going to be difficult these boys are playing so much football um, with so little recovery time and we, we, we simply haven't got the bodies registered with the football club to, to come in it's hard. I don't think there'll be many other 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds playing four games on back-to-back in seven or eight days at this level of football. So it's huge credit to the players, the likes of Barney and, and Dan Corn. Huge credit to them to be doing it and to be holding their own. But it is also a huge ask and uh, one they shouldn't really be being asked to do. Any injuries? Uh, any, any injury one worries, Jody? Well, uh, Sam Corn rolled his ankle. Uh, we're hoping that it's nothing too serious and that he's available, but we won't know now until until the day, I guess, with it being such a quick turnaround. Same as Bassel. Um, you guys will have obviously seen him getting his treatment, um, so we've got to hope that there's no reaction to that either. And then we've got Joe Healy and uh, Zach Fagan both struggling quite badly with these flu-like symptoms and obviously the goalkeeper's going to be suspended so not a great deal to pick from but I, I, felt, I just felt certainly on the coach on the way back um, the boys have got a determination to to react to that they all feel that they can perform 
perform a lot better. He's probably the best way to put it. They can perform a lot better. Um, and, and hopefully they will.